Welcome back. In this lesson, I want to take a few minutes to look at the process of data modeling within Microsoft Access. And that's essentially the process of determining the requirements of your data and organizing it for efficient storage and retrieval. In an earlier lesson, I talked about how creating your tables and organizing them is the most important part of creating a database application. And that's very, very much true. Whenever you're creating a new application, you need to take some time to really think about what data needs to be stored. Aside from the essential data, you need to think about what data is required to support that data. And it's important to plan out the tables a little bit. This doesn't have to take a week. It doesn't even have to take a few days. It can just be a few hours to start with to decide what you really need to store and how you're going to organize into tables. The first step in that is to actually identify the objects represented. And in order to do that, we need to take a look back at the job search plus database that we started out this course with. So looking back at the job search plus database, let's go ahead and start that up. And again, I'm going to hold down the shift key so that we can bypass the code and going to database tools and relationships we can see here the relationships involved in the job search plus database and when I was first designing this I needed to sit down and think about what information a job seeker might want to store not just the essential information and not just the stuff that I would do but the information that anybody going for any type of position might need to record and keep track of. The first thing I did was identify the objects represented. And of course, the central object is a job lead. When I say object, I'm not necessarily talking about physical objects. These might be transactions. They might be non-physical concepts that involve a number of attributes. In this case, it's a lead, which involves the re recording date, the date the lead was actually recorded, job title, description, uh, the location, the company, where I obtained the lead. And those are important pieces of information in any job lead. And then for every lead, you have activities, whether it's sending in a resume, whether it's attending an interview, whether it's closing out the lead. Then once you've identified that information, we realize that there's a lot of supporting information. You have a company and maybe an agency. So you have information that you want to keep on those companies, the name, the contact information, uh, the phone number, their website. Whenever you're pursuing a job lead, it's a good idea to get as much information about the company as possible. So when designing the application, I built in the tables and the fields that would support that information. You have contacts within each company. You might have multiple contacts, whether it's for the company or an agency. And you want to maintain those contacts. You want to get their specific contact information. Sometimes you might go back to a company for more than one lead. You want to be able to follow up with your contacts there as much as possible. You have sources. You want to maybe track the sources like monster.com or dice.com or your local newspapers that are the most effective for you. So these are all objects that represent information that you need to store. And after you've identified those objects, you need to identify the attributes as we've just seen. Again, with the company's database, it was their contact information. The, with the lead, it was the company and other information. So you want to think about every piece of information that would describe those objects that you might need to record. And then once you've done that, then you can go on to actually create the tables to store the information. And then you can link those tables as needed. As you can see here, the activities table is linked to leads, so we can have many activities for each lead. The companies table is linked to both the company ID and agency ID. For every lead, you might have 
one of each of those. You might have multiple contacts for each company that you track. So those tables are linked so that we can pull the information based on those relationships and put that information into reports and forms that we need in order to effectively work with it. Let's take a look at the Collier Public Library database that we're designing in this course. We're designing a library database and what would you consider to be the primary objects within any library database? Well, first of all, you'd have the books. You have an inventory of books that you're lending out to people, so you have to track information on each one of those. The title, the author, the year it was published, the description, and that certainly deserves its own table. And then you would have the customers or patrons, however you refer to them. You want to have not only their name, you want to have their contact information, whether it's to contact them about overdue books or run promotions or whatever. So there's a certain amount of information that you want to keep on them. And then, of course, the central activity of any library is checkouts. You need to know when a book was checked out, who checked it out, and when it's due back. You want to be able to track overdue books. You want to be able to check it back in. Those are all processes that your data has to support. Once you get outside the central tables, you might want to track information on the authors. You might want to have not only the author's name, their bio, their year they were born, or the date they were born. If you're operating a website where your customers can access various information, you might want to put that all on the website, or you might, again, want to run special promotions for local authors. So it's a good idea to have a table for authors, if only so that you don't have to type their name over and over again in the books table. So you can avoid typos and duplications. Then you might want to have a table on publishers. You might want to have their contact information and other information on them. You never know. It's something that you have to decide as you go. And finally, you might want to have a table on suppliers. Every library has to get its books somewhere. Maybe that's directly from the publishers, maybe not. You'll want to have their contact information. Uh, you might want to store the price of the book, maybe in the books table, maybe elsewhere, depending on your system. So those are ideas for the types of tables that you're going to want to put into a, a database such as a library database. And as you're designing your own applications, this is the kind of process that you need to go through in order to determine what kind of data that you need to store. In the next few lessons, we'll start designing some of these tables and you'll see how simple it is to put these tables together and link them and build the foundation of your application.